good evening once again hi everyone welcome to another edition of uh, microbiotics bow talk um this evening we'll be talking about a disease that has um recently achieved an international significance um I will have done this before now, but I decided to wait. And uh, I think recently that disease has been added to uh, diseases of international priority. So I have to talk about it. And that's monkeypox. Monkeypox, which uh, is referred to mostly as uh, MPOS. Uh, monkeypox is actually a viral disease, uh, a zoonotic disease actually, because it's uh, transmitted uh, majorly from monkey to human, and it's uh, actually very similar to smallpox that has been uh, eradicated a long time ago, but the only difference is that. Um, the, with monkeypox, the mortality rate is actually very low, very very low compared to smallpox. Um, so uh, monkeypox uh, was initially discovered in 1959 from monkeys, and then in uh, 1970 it was discovered in human. Uh, from a child in uh, DRC. Uh, the disease is actually very relevant because it is an endemic disease in Western and Central Africa. So, um, because of this uh, endemicity, uh, the World Health Organization has added it to one of their priority diseases to look out for. And uh, I, I I have to talk about it now. <laughs> so, uh, monkeypox was um, was already should we say has already been taken care of in quotes during vaccination for smallpox because of their similarity. But after the eradication of smallpox, um, the vaccination against smallpox was discontinued, and this gave. Uh, Give monkeypox the uh, the the room to actually rise and, and become a, a serious uh, case, and it's actually very prevalent in West Africa and Central Africa. Uh, but of course, because of uh, the underreporting nature of the disease and also similarity to us, uh, to other diseases as well so it's it's not really being reported the way it's supposed to be so um like i said it's actually being spread from uh, animal to human but once an human gets the infection it can definitely transfer uh, transmit it it can be acquired by another human so, uh, so the, the present uh, epidemic, the endemicity that is being experienced now is actually human-to-human transmission. And you can, someone can actually get uh, contract the infection through respiratory droplets, uh, through formites, that's an inanimate object, and through direct uh, contact with the lesions of uh, infected individuals. Those are the... Uh, should I call it uh, oh, internal wounds? The 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 uh, fluid that comes from the internal wounds or open wound of uh, infected uh, individual. Uh, well, uh, analysis has also shown that um, the virus uh, the virus uh, is actually present in other body fluid like uh, urine, saliva, semen. Oh God, and <laughs> and feces. And uh, of course, uh, the virus can also be 
gotten from the oropharynx as well and uh, well it's been suggested that because of the presence in semen uh, sexual transmission could also be a major driver of the transmission so um like i said in terms of the epidemiology it's very endemic in central and west africa and most uh, cases seem to be concentrated in the uh, democratic republic of uh, congo but um, we've been having cases radic uh, clusters outside of africa as well um, we've been having cases in the u.s um, in the united kingdom and uh, that's because of traveling or maybe um, what they call it the transportation of uh, pets can also cause this apart from human to human uh, um, transmission so um, uh, the, the symptoms are actually um, like most uh, symptoms of uh, viral diseases we have a fever headache fatigue the final uh, party and the likes then um, after about two to between two to four weeks we have uh, um, should I call it rashes uh, but this rash is actually different from other rash other rashes uh, they are more of uh, lesions and they are concentrated a little bit elevated on the body uh, we are going to show uh, images in uh, the subsequent um, article that we're going to release very soon so um, of course like I said the predominant uh, features of this disease is, uh, the lesions on the skin the lesions on the skin uh, well there's no treatment for impulse actually no specifically uh, proven treatment so most of what they that is, both of what are given are supportive uh, uh, treatments for the symptoms. But of course, like I said, um, like all diseases, it can not, it can definitely be prevented. Um, the diseases have a look-alike of other diseases as well. There's the differential diagnosis. So, and the differential diagnosis include the small pulse, uh, zoster, that's uh, shaking pulse. Um, uh, we have syphilis, your scabies, measles, and of course a bacterial skin infection. Don't forget that uh, the predominant clinical symptoms is usually seen on the skin. So um, we have two distinct uh, clades, two dif- uh, distinct uh, uh, yeah clades of impulse as a kind of uh, regional type, and. Uh, uh, there's the West African clade and then the Central African clade. The West African clade is less uh, fatal, less fatal, just one percent. Why the Central African clade is actually more lethal, with a case fat- a fatality rate of about eleven percent, especially in unvaccinated children. So, and uh, what makes this disease or what makes it uh, highly important? highly um, relevant medically are the complications so the complications actually wasn't the matter because most of the time people recover uh, faster from the infection but the complications which include uh, bacteria super infection of the skin uh, permanent skin scarring uh, hyperpigmentation uh, vision loss uh, pneumonia dehydration sepsis uh, encephalitis and of course death so these uh, complications are what makes um, are what make um, monkey pulse actually a very important uh, and relevant disease so uh, in terms of um, prevention of course uh, the best prevention method is uh, local containment Wherever the infection is actually being noted, the human should be quarantined and then uh, given supportive treatment so that um, it won't spread. It won't spread. Minimal contact should be maintained with the 
uh, infected individuals so that there won't be humans to humans uh, transmission and uh, of course animal to human transmission is possible but of course not everybody plays with monkeys <laughs> uh, okay so um, uh, finally the if, if you're working in the zoo in close proximity to monkeys you should um, should also be very careful you also be careful, uh, protect yourself. Don't, don't get uh, monkey paws from monkeys. <laughs> all right, so uh, that will be all for this uh, evening on monkey paws. Uh, attached with the uh, talk will be the article where you can definitely get uh, more detailed information. Uh, thank you for staying tuned for this evening. Um, like I always say, make sure you take care of your health. Good night and sleep well.